Hello, welcome to Reptile TV. My intro animal is the Australian knob-tailed gecko. In this case, it's Nephrurus vertebralis. The vertebralis, in particular, I think you don't see it that often in herpetoculture. Although I did recently have Nephrurus levis as my intro animal, and now it's the vertebralis. As I already mentioned with the levis, um, Knob-tailed geckos um, used to be real rarities um, and cost around or over a thousand euros. Nowadays they've become quite affordable at just a few hundred euros. They're great terrarium animals um, and are actually quite easy to breed and reproduce. Uh, this one here is a sub-adult uh, female, I think it's a female. No, I actually think it's a male. Um, yeah, really a great terrarium animal. The terrarium size is also manageable. Um, maybe a 90 centimeter terrarium would be suitable. Um, yeah, I think it's a great terrarium animal and uh, that's why it's your intro animal for today. We made the second part of the Ask Stefan series, uh, you know. Um, we put out a call for questions, um, that was a few weeks ago now, uh, or even months. Um, that's when we did an Ask Stefan call, there were really such good, interesting questions. So we thought, should we just rush through them? Uh, but that wouldn't really help, so we decided, come on, let's make a second episode. And uh, the second episode is coming up now. Timo Liberast, uh, hello Stefan. There are always rumors in the media that large snakes like reticulated pythons, rock pythons, etc., have eaten people before. Uh, what's your take on that? Do you think it's true or are those just rumors? Um, Timo, yes, I do think so. Well, of course, we all know about social media and the press and uh, naturally they have to attract people with headlines, as we all understand. Um, I do think so. I mean, there have definitely been such cases. There are, well, a few cases um, that have been more or less um, definitively or reliably proven where this has happened. I think, uh, if anything, it's mainly about the reticulated python and, and maybe the anaconda. Um, Burmese python as well, but with a big question mark. Um, rock python, I think so, the African rock python personally, I don't know of any cases involving the rock python. Um, maybe it's good for you guys, if you have any information about that, uh, you can leave it in the comments below. To be clear, this isn't meant to spark sensationalism. Not, oh, look at this, look at that, but let's discuss this professionally and objectively. If you know anything about it, uh, share in the comments. What I know is that Asian reticulated pythons, the reticulated python gets enormous um, and something else that might be relevant, as strange as it may sound, but it's actually not strange. Um, in some regions of Asia, people are naturally smaller than, say, a, a Western European like me, who uh, already weighs 80 kilos or so. Um, if I now have um, an adult man or woman maybe weighing around 40, 50 or even 60 kilos. Or of course, with a child, regardless of where they're from, the possibility is naturally much greater um, than it's biologically possible or just in terms of the size ratio, you know. If I have a large reticulated python that's six, seven, eight meters long, which maybe weighs a good 100 or more kilos itself, then under certain circumstances, it could use a small human as prey. Um, what I think makes things more difficult is that humans are not typical prey. It's not like a reticulated python just eats everything it can overpower. It also has its preferences, uh, as we terrarium keepers know very well. For example, if it eats mice, it eats mice. And if I offer it a bird, it won't want to eat the bird, simply because that's not its kind of prey or something like that. Um, and I can imagine it's similar in nature. Humans simply aren't considered typical prey, um, but 
accidents can happen or there can be individual animals that behave differently uh, where it then actually becomes possible. Like if people were working somewhere by a river doing something and the reticulated python hadn't eaten anything for six or eight weeks, um, it might think, oh well, there's a snack, I'll treat myself to that now. So from that perspective, um, for me, these cases aren't unimaginable, uh, though of course they're tragic. I think um, we, we shouldn't forget there's also a person involved with family, with loved ones, uh, who will of course mourn as well. Um, so it's, it's definitely a fate behind it as well. And we shouldn't forget that just because we're so interested in the biology. But um, from that point of view, I do think it's entirely possible. There are also those few cases that are uh, more or less documented, Plamenkuchen. Since 2023, a certificate of competence is required in Austria if you want to keep reptiles or amphibians. How likely do you think it is that um, something like that could also be introduced in Germany? How do you see the future of reptile keeping in Germany? Uh, plum cake. For one thing, I asked uh, a well-known breeder from Austria who really knows his stuff. Uh, Willy, thanks for the information you just gave me on the phone. I was surprised by this, uh, the certificate of competence in Austria. I'd never heard of that before. Um, actually, um, the information you wrote is, is a bit incorrect. Austrians don't need a certificate of competence in advance. Instead, they have to register every reptile, whether it's protected by conservation laws or not. Here in Germany, we have to register all sites or protected species. Um, and in Austria, every reptile has to be registered, whether it's sites listed or not. I have to specify what kind of terrarium, maybe a bit about the lighting or how I set it up. I've been told that the more precisely I describe how I keep them, the better. It means fewer follow-up questions, unlike if I just write, I have a crested gecko in a terrarium that's 40 by 40 by 60. In that case, it's likely authorities will ask for more information. So in that respect, the more detailed I am, the better. Um, whether that's really necessary for every reptile, honestly, I find that a bit difficult to say with certainty. I mean, you can live with it. Sure, if I buy a reptile, I can also register it. That's not a problem for me. Why not? It just seems like an extra step. But if, if it's required, I suppose it's manageable. But uh, I wonder, with, with dogs, cats, mice or whatever, do I have to do that too? Most likely not. So why do I have to do it for reptiles then? It's just that whole thing again uh, about so-called exotic animals. I think that's a bit stupid. Regarding the situation in Germany, there are voices and efforts calling for a certificate of uh, competence to be required in Germany. It sometimes shocks me that even terrarium keepers say, well, come on, let's do a certificate of competence. I think that's the wrong approach. Yeah, so if, if anything, we should have to uh, do that for every pet. We'd have to say for every pet, okay, you have to get a certificate of competence and only once you have it are you allowed to keep that pet. So that's kind of like how I, um, for example, have to get a fishing license if I want to go fishing or something like that. I think that's just over bureaucratization, which uh, I really don't think is necessary. You don't have to treat every citizen like they're stupid and say, oh, you're probably just too dumb to keep it properly anyway. So that's exactly why you have to take a test first. Uh, what I think is important is, of course, education, things like, I mean, that's really why we're making these episodes. We're not doing this just for fun and games, and I'm certainly not doing it to make money, because uh, in our niche, with the few thousand views we get per episode, it actually costs me more than it brings in, you know. So uh, anyone who thought you could uh, make money with Reptile Tiva, unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, of course, it's advertising for our for my company for MNS reptiles, but it's also really about education and information that I want to to provide here, and I think that's important. But um, as I said, demanding that everyone has to take a test before they're allowed to get a reptile, I think um, that's completely the wrong approach. Uh, I hope that never happens. Um, at the moment, things are actually looking pretty good again. I have to say. Uh, our croco that we have now, uh, the red and black only doesn't really seem to be making any efforts in that direction either, at least not that we've noticed. There was nothing in the election program either. 
So I'm optimistic that we'll still be allowed to keep reptiles in the coming years, even decades, um, without having to prove our expertise beforehand. Dois. Here's a question that interests me. With many animals, you see age-related changes, wrinkles, uh, gray fur, health issues, uh, gray fur, health problems due to age. Um, yeah, I have those two back pain and so on. That applies to mammals like me as well. For example, not having consistently good digestion anymore. I have that um, since intestinal activity also decreases a bit. Is it similar for um, ball pythons or other reptiles? Uh, dementia in old dogs is well known. Uh, can reptiles show this too? Best regards. Um, good question. I found it interesting. Uh, it's actually true. Um, because reptiles shed their skin, it's much harder for me to see, you know, after shedding, a reptile looks as if it were freshly born, so to speak. Uh, everything underneath is, is renewed again. And at least in terms of color, shine and the skin, I really don't see any difference at all. And I would say that's actually true almost right up to the very last day. Um, but even with a reptile life, I have a snake, for example, like a corn snake or a ball python, both of which are common pet snakes and which can live for a good 20 or even 30 years. At some point, you do notice that um, the tissue becomes weaker. I think aging isn't quite as, as uh, gradual as it is in mammals, where it actually starts pretty early, even when they're still in their prime and the beard turns gray or um, the skin changes in some uh, noticeable way. I think with reptiles it happens um, relatively late. You can also see that, for example, in their reproductive ability. I think a reptile can really, uh, during its life, probably for 90% of its life or even longer, uh, reproduce. Um, and it's the same with their appearance. I'd say that in the last one, two or three years of a reptile's life, so maybe five to 10% of its lifespan, you start to notice, or you can already see it in reptiles. They do get a bit flabby. Um, for example, when I feed them, I have customers who have, for instance, corn snakes that are almost 30 years old, uh, and um, they no longer feed them live prey because the snake simply doesn't have the strength anymore to catch and constrict a live mouse. So they give them frozen food, and the snake just leisurely eats the, the thawed mouse. Um, but overall, it just isn't as strong or as agile anymore. You can also see it in the body shape, right? That muscular roundness fades or the tissue becomes weaker. The snake's body might become a bit, a little more triangular in shape. You can actually observe that, you know, in terms of color, I'd say that after shedding, they look about the same because they're a bit also, I think it also loses fat in its body. So, as I said, the, the body becomes more triangular, some fat decreases. Because of that, the triangular body might not be quite as vibrant in color as when it's plump and round or something like that. Um, but those are really just nuances. And as I said, I think this is really just the, the relatively short final phase of life. When then, when a snake or with a lizard, actually everything I've just said about snakes, I think can be applied to lizards as well. For example, bearded dragons or, or leopard geckos um, that then, as I said, the last phase is one where you can already see it in the animal. That was the second part of Ask Stefan. We didn't want to release them together since that would just be me talking. We can't show any animals. Um, that's why we left a bit of a gap. Um, if you liked it, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Um, if you have questions or suggestions, feel free to, to comment below. We also check in regularly. You can see that, so it's not like we don't read them. Uh, we read everything you write to us. Um, otherwise, stay loyal to me and once again, check my words.